When Allah Azawajal created Adam Alayhi Salaam, He made Jannah in a way that it was absolutely beautiful, it was everything that He needed. Uh, and there was one tree Allah told him, this one tree you don't eat from there. In fact, the, the, forbid, the, the forbidden um, element was given to, to him after Hawa was created. Now, how was Hawa created? And there's a, there's a massive lesson to learn from this. Adam a.s. was in Jannah and he was lonely. And he was feeling that though Allah had given him all these beautiful things, all the beautiful, you can imagine, all the fruits, all the food, all the clothing, all the houses, all the places, drinks and so on. Um, he just was very unsettled. Something was, was missing from him. And he happened to lie down. There's two different narrations. One is that he happened to sit down, in the, you know, sit down and, and just drop off. And then he sort of opened his eyes and he saw Hawa in front of him. Another one is that he actually lied down and he slept. And when he woke up at, by his head side, he sees this beautiful woman. Now, what Allah did during his sleep is he took an element from his left rib. An element from his left rib and, from, and he took it from the, the bottom left rib. It wasn't the top. Now, the ribs, the rib cage... Um, works as you've got the, the larger ones at the top and you've got the smaller ones at the bottom, right? Uh, and, you know, I, I, I want sisters to understand this clearly because this is going to be related to a hadith and please don't sort of suddenly walk off now or don't listen to the rest of the, the, the tafsir that I'm going to give otherwise you're going to think, you know, that man, you know, he's so sexist and he's making these comments about us and this and that, you know. Please take it easy, sisters. I'm going to explain to you um, the, 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 the full thing. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has told us to be good to women. He said, um, He said, look, just, just give, you know, create good advice for women as well. And he himself has told us to be good towards them and to be gentle towards them and so on and so forth. And then he told the men, of his time, and this is not a, only to the men of his time, this is till the day of judgment. He said, you know, when what happened is, he, he explained, he said, you might be, you might be good to a woman all your life. And then you do something wrong and she will turn at you and she will say, you've never done anything good for me. And this is the hadith. And again, sisters, don't switch off yet, okay? I'm not, I'm not here to, you know, uh, beat the sisters up or whatever or give, give something along those lines. You've got to understand the full hadith. So he then added, sallallahu alayhi he sallallahu alayhi then added, he said that, he said, the woman, she has been created from the dila or from the, from the rib of a man. And she has been created from the bottom one. From the left side and the bottom one. And then he added, he says, that that is the most, the most crooked out of all the ones that you got. But then he advises us and he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that since she has been created from man's bottom, most crooked left rib, if you go and try to straighten it, you will break it. And if you leave it, then it remains crooked. If you go and try and straighten it, you will break it. And if you leave it as it is, it's crooked. Now, there's a lot of lessons to learn from here. And again, I don't want sisters to take it the wrong way, you know, what's been said in the hadith. And there's a lot of people, Western sort of writers, who try and jump on the bandwagon of Islamophobia and all that, and attacking Islam, saying, look what your prophet says about women. No, 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 no. no. You completely misunderstand this hadith if, if, you, if you don't look at the wealth of hadith around it. Don't forget that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his life is an explanation of all of his words. So he's never been cruel to any of his wives. No, forget cruelness. He's never even, you know, done anything that they could even say wrong about him. This is one of the mojahs. This is one of the miracles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is simply a miracle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no man. If I ask this question, right, to you guys, whoever's married here, unless you've been married yesterday or like one month ago, right, if you can put your hands up and say you've never had an argument with your wife, please put your hands up right now. Yeah? No one, even I can't put my hands up, right? No imam can put his hand up. 
No wali of Allah can put his hand up. No close person, no sahabi can put his hand up and say, my wife, you know, I've never have an, had an argument with her. No wali of Allah, no one. Only Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He's the only one. If he was here, he'd be able to put his hand up. And that's the reason why, you know, you know that book about the hundred most influential people in the world or the, or the most hundred, most ranking, most ranking people in the world. Well, Michael Hart wrote his book. He says in there, he puts Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa number one and he explains why he made Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa number one. And I was fascinated to read his, his little now, seven page thing about our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And he says in there, he says, most men, you can find out about their lives in their outside world. And you know, you can rate them and you can say, you know, military leader or, you know, scientist and you can say this and that about them. But only a few men you get to know about their private life. Only a few men you will get to know about the private life. Even then, most men will only give it to you through an autobiography. They will not allow a private person in their life to tell you about the whole of their life. And the case of Rasulullah is that ma, you know, Mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she's got 2,000 ahadith from the Prophet and a good few tens of ahadith of them are about their private life. At least a hundred or around a hundred are about their private life. And in there, she's got nothing to say but good about the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why he says, this is the only man you can find positive outside and positive in his private life. So please take this in consideration when you come back to that hadith about Rasulullah ﷺ explaining about the woman. And don't forget that Rasulullah ﷺ, even on his last khutbah, you know, in Arafat, in one of his major khutbahs he's given to us, he's told us to be good to our women throughout his life. He's told people, you know, how, how good they should be to their women. He's told them that the best of you, the best people amongst you are the best to their wives and I'm the best to, to my own own you know, wife, wives and so on and so forth. Okay, so cut a long story short, let's get back to that hadith again. That hadith, when, when, when Hawa, you know, alayhi salam, when she was created from Adam alayhi salam, it shows us that number one is that she was created from man himself. Allah created Adam السلام, without a father, without a mother. Allah created Hawa without a father, without a mother. However, Allah has made Adam السلام, directly khalaqtuhu bi yadayya. I created him directly from my own hands. But the, you know, we don't say his hands like this. Whatever Allah meant by that. Whatever Allah meant by that, he directly created him. But when Allah created Hawa, she was created from a second source. So it was from Adam. What you've got to remember about that is, the way Allah has made this world is, that the men until the day of judgment are going to be dominant in the world. That is Allah's rule. You know, all this thing about feminism and this and that. Look, sisters who are listening to this, we don't have a problem with sisters being in charge of many parts of the running sort of, you know, quarters that we've got. There's nothing wrong with that. If a sister wants to become a judge, fine, you want to become this. I know there have been Muslim women judges in the past and so on. You know, I don't want to get into all of this. She can be a muftiya. Say that Aisha was a muftiya herself, uh, radiallahu anha. We don't have a problem with that. The thing is, when Allah said he's going to make Adam السلام, the Khalifa, he's going to make him. He said, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi Khalifa, I'm going to make a vicegerent on the earth. He didn't say about two. He didn't say about Adam and Hawa. He said only about Adam. Now that doesn't mean a woman cannot rule certain matters. She can. But we've got a system in this world. And the system is that no matter what you say, generally the man is going to be dominant over the woman. Now, <clears throat> You might question this and you might say, no, well, that's, how can you do that? And that's sexist and that's wrong. And that. Look, I asked, um, I, I once asked um, um, Sheikh Rashid, Zahid Rashid, Zahid Rashid from um, Pakistan. He came to Zikandar and asked him, I said, look, Sheikh, you know, I, I go, I, I said, I'm, I'm an imam and I go out there and I get questioned about this gender thing and equality and all that. I said, you know, please, Sheikh, give, give me, give me a you know, thing. How are we supposed to look at this thing? And he said, look, this is, this is you, what you've got to do is that you've got to assess the situation and see what's happening. So I said, but look, look you know, a, a woman like, you know, the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher, that's what, that's what I talked about. I said, look, Thatcher, she ruled the whole country and so on, blah, blah. But he said, look, he said, rules are not made on exceptions. Rules are not made on exceptions. We do believe that a woman can rule 
you know, uh, as in a woman has the ability to rule. Whether in Islam there's a debate whether a woman should rule or not, there's a debate of that. I'm not, I'm not saying that a woman, you know, in Islam should rule a country. No, no. What I'm saying generally, if the woman has the ability, but rules are made not on exceptions, but on the general masses. This is one of the things he said. And if you, he said, he said, if you were to go in any army where they've employed women inside there, and from the toughest side of life, there are many tough sides of life, of istiqlaf. When Allah said about Khalifa to Adam alayhi salam, there are things of the most important matters which are the most reigning, governing, sovereignty, ruling the world and controlling the world. It is on a general scale the job of a man to do that, not a woman. Allah just hasn't created her for the greatest matters of the earth for her to rule the world. Right? Until the Day of Judgment, that's not going to happen. I'm telling you from Allah's, from this, from this word, what you can derive, from when Allah said about Adam as being the Khalifa, what you can derive is that until the Day of Judgment, there will never be a dominant group of women who will all rule the world. It will not happen. It just will not happen because of the way the nature of the man is. So he gave me an example. He said, okay, the Americans have accepted the, the women into the army. He said, that's fine. And they talk about equality, that the woman can also fight in the army. That's fine. But he said, what you want to do is, don't talk about women being the army, talk about women being in the front line. When you start looking at the stats of women being in the front line of actual fire, he said, start reading the reports on that. Start getting the scientific journals on that. You'll see that the man himself, you know, it's, it's really hard to be there and see legs being blown off. Right? And blood squirting all over your face, your eyes. And then you have to run and you're seeing some guy, you know, his eyes have been sort of, you know, gouged out. And you see some other one that's been hanged on a tree or whatever. And, and his, his body is rotting and so on. It's not everyone's thing, stomach. Not everyone has got a stomach to take that. But he said, if you look at the reports of the scientific journals on the studies of the people who've gone to the armies, you will find that most men still are able to take that. But most women are not. A lot of women have come back with, with severe disorder after they've gone to the front lines. That's why even the armies, they will, they will try and you know, not allow the woman, you know, many women to go to the front lines. He said, many of these greater things now, we're not saying that the woman doesn't have a place on this earth. No, Allah has created a beautiful world where he's made opposites. Now, please understand this here. Yeah? Where you've got the earth, you've got the sky. Where you've got heat, you've got coldness. Where you've got like right, you've got left. Where you've got, you know, you know, rain or wetness, you've got dryness. Allah's created opposites. The man is an opposite of the woman. The woman is an opposite of the man. And they're two halves. They go together. So, for example, you need the rain and you need the sun to try and get plantation. You, you, need, you want plants and you want greenness. You want photosynthesis to work. You better have rain and you better have the sun as well. They both go together as a unit. The rain cannot claim that I, you know, you the sun, you're up and high and you, you, you look over and, you know, everyone looks at you and everyone blames me for making a wrong day and all of that. And, you know, you get all the credit and everyone, you know, everyone comes out and everyone enjoys you and they talk so good about you. And I, I get the blame of, of coming down, but yet they survive on me. I should be like you the sun. Right? And I should be like you bright and I should be like you hot instead of being a cold element and so on. If that happened, things would go wrong. If cold became heat, heat became cold and it all became hot or it all became cold, something would go wrong. The same way, look, the man and woman have been created as opposites. What does that mean? That means that we complement each other. The man complements the woman in this world. The woman complements the man. And how that is, if you look truly in the nature of men and women, you will find that subhanAllah, what Allah has given the, the woman to do, the man can't do. Mother, for example, Allah has called the walida, Allah has called the um, Allah has given her hanan, Allah has given her great love, deep love, Allah has made her you know, have wood and, and unconditional love inside her heart. The man cannot, on men in general, cannot match this. And kids need this. Part of a human upbringing is that you are balanced with your intellectual thinking and your emotional part. And the woman provides the emotional part, the man provides the intellectual part. And as a human being, we need both of them to, to become a great human being. And Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, what Allah has given to, to, to the woman who can show in many, you know, many, many things that she can toil in the smaller parts of the of life, which men can't do and men are not good, good at for the scrutiny that the woman has. I'm talking about general sense, the men doesn't have, the men don't have. You know, you, you talk about, you know, the secretarial job, right? Why are men not good at it? Because men generally don't have the 
you know, don't have that clockwork ability that many women have and they're not sort of, you know, good at the finer details as, as women are. But, but the women, again, in many jobs that men do, they, they can't sort of match them. Now, come back to that hadith again. That hadith, what does it mean? It means first is the secondary source. That's one thing I said. Second, from the rib I'm talking about. Yeah? Second thing is, if you were to take, if you were to look at your rib, what would you do with your own rib? If you said, look, why is my rib bent? Would that be a question? The best thing is that your rib remains bent. Where your rib is, even the lowest part of your rib, you want your rib to stay where it is. And you want it to be in that shape because it puts your body shape in it. Right? The spine is different. The spine, is the, the spine, you want it to be straight. The ribs, you want it to be bent. Again, there's a compliment. When Allah created the human being in Surah Tariq, He said, min sulbi wa taraib. The human being, he comes out from, you know, the, the, the sperm or the semen that emanates, it comes out from between somewhere where the spine is and the ribs are. Why did Allah say that? Because both of this structure, the ribs can't remain without the spine. And the spine can't remain without the ribs. The body will be all sort of jelly shaped without the ribs. So again, what the, what the, um, what, 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 what the meaning of this is, or the lesson that we understand from is that, is that there's a great complementing part of the man being straight and the woman having her you know, having her slight bentness in her. What does that mean? That means that the man would have a greater portion of the intelligence. See, if you look at the spine, now these are things I'm just deriving for you from this. You may not find it in, in the books, but I'm just giving you things. Like, look at the spine. The spine is connected to what? The spine is connected to the brain. It's connected to the brain. The brain, with, if the, if the uh, neck breaks, then you become paralyzed for life. If the brain connection stops, what Allah Azza wa has given an ishara or indication to is that the men mainly have got this intelligence, more of this, not, not intelligence, sorry. It's called the using more of the intellectual capacities over the emotions. Whereas Allah has created women who generally will use more emotion over the intellectual capacity. Not to say that they're not intelligent. No, that is wrong to say that about women. So what does that mean? That means again, it's a compliment. You need both of these sides. Um, this is one of the reasons why when you have got uh, the most delicate of the human beings in the hands of a woman, she's able to keep it, you know, moving on. You know, like if, if, you, if you have a single father and a single mother, I don't know if you look, looked at these studies, there are studies out there, please go and see them. If you look at families where single fathers have brought the children up, the, the children are, are, are more sort of, you know, they grow up with, with sort of feelings that are more sort of strong and, and hard. Whereas if single mothers, children grow up with that, they, they grow up with more soft sort of, um, sort of feelings. And when you've got parents together, they both can complement. Now why I'm talking about single here is you get a taste of what the man gives and what the woman gives. The woman, Allah has created her. Look, the emotions are somewhere deep down there. And that's what Allah says, said about her coming from the from the rib why because the emotions are attached to that allah azza wa jal has made them in such a way that together they make a wonderful combination but on their own they're not really good even the man on his own is not that good even the woman on her own is not that good a friend of me uh, of mine said to me the other, and actually he was an alim as well he said subhanallah how allah has in islam given the matter of the divorce in the man's hands and not in the woman's why because he said he said, if you look at any stats of divorce, divorce cases in the UK. So, you know, there are, there are divorce stats that you can get straight from the internet and you can find out how many, you know, divorces took place in the United Kingdom. How many of those were instigated by men and how many of those were instigated by the women? Because in this country, obviously, the law is that the woman can apply for a divorce and the man can apply for the divorce. He said, subhanallah, if you look at the stats, majority of people in the UK or Western world, where they've opened it to men and women to divorce when, whoever wants to, whenever they want to, you will find the majority of the 80% of the cases have been because the woman has instigated the divorce. Why? Because the emotions get high. And when emotions get high, her, her you know, intellectual capacity, they can become cloudy. That's what happens. And that's why Allah gave the man the right to have the divorce in his hand. Now, this is Allah's distribution because he understands how we work best. 
Um, so that's that's another point that I mentioned. Another point I want to mention is that the rib itself, Rasulullah said that if you straighten, you break it. If you leave it, it stays as it is. Allah has created women. Don't expect your woman, your wife to think like a man. It's a big mistake a lot of men make out there. They think that the wife, why can't she think like me? Why can't you? Well, if you thought like you should be a man, <laughs> you know, if you thought like you should be like a man. You don't want a man in the house. You don't want a, you, a man and her, a man. You don't want that, do you, right? So she's going to think differently, right? And, and one of the things she will do is that she might get upset and she will swell up sometimes. And this happens with women. This happens. And even look, I'm talking about women that have worked with me, women that are in my family, in my household, in my you know, relatives, and women that I know of. I'm, I'm giving you a general you know, thing about, about women. Is that when, when these matters go, when political situations come and when things go, you know, start, start to go slightly haywire, women, you know, Allah has created them that they, they can sort of sometimes get a bit off course. They lose the balance slightly in their thinking pattern. Now, I'm not talking about all women, please. I'm talking about general thing. But men lose their balance of emotion when it comes to an emotional drift. They, they lose their balance. For, for example, right, if you had certain kids that need, the, you know, he's a single father and he needs those women, those children that are dependent upon him. After a little while, he first might say, okay, you know, better, whatever, come over here, I'll give you this. After a little while, he say, look, I gave you the spoon, right? I gave you the spoon. Now you're crying for another spoon, right? You drop it on the ground. Just, just pick it up. Pick that spoon up from the ground. Pick that spoon up. That's what I said, right? right give it to me. Let me wash it out. Give it back to you, right? I'm sick of that. I'm getting late for work, right? You, you, you kids, right? Driving me crazy, right? You, you just need to have breakfast really quickly. And I need to just get out of here, okay? You're late for this. You're late for that. Now he's going to snap. And I'm telling you, it happens. All right? What will the woman do in that situation? When it's emotionally, they're driving her crazy. And I've seen this. Emotionally, the kids are driving, like even my wife or other situations. You know, I can, I can clearly relate to my wife. Um, they're driving crazy. And you know what? Her love is still there. Her love is still there. You know, okay, okay. Don't worry. I'll just, I'll just wash it. Here, here's another, here's another spoon. Just take it. Just finish it off. Sometimes they're like, they're going crazy. They, they, they're like ones, you know, attacking that one. One's like, you did this, you started it, you did this, you did that, that. What will a man do? The man's going to come in the middle and say, First he might, okay, first he might take it easy, then after a few incidents. But I'm talking about the 20th incident, the 30th incident, the man will say, hey, you, over there, in that corner. You, over there, in that corner. What will a woman do? A woman's going to come over here, sit on my lap. Come over here, sit on my lap. You know, why are you crying for? Tell me, you know. Yeah, that, that affection, a man can't do, a man can't do her thing, right? So what I'm saying is that she becomes rocky when it comes to more intellectual things in this life and he becomes more rocky when it becomes to, to the emotional things of life. You know, he hasn't got a, he, he is not always on the straight when it comes to those emotional periods and she's not always straight when it comes to all those intellectual things. So that's why, that's why you just leave her as she is. You, the, the whole point of it is that Rasulullah has said, no, if you go and straighten it, you're going to break it. If you leave it, it stays, it remains. And it was, was made the way Allah made it. Just, just leave it like that. So what should a man do? A man has to understand that this piece of a bone inside him has been created for that reason that it remains like that. Of course, you know, we have to deal with the situation uh, as it is in, in, in our daily lives. But that's, that's the thing about Hawa alayhi salam that she been created. Now that she was created, she was created, she was the thing that was missing in his life. He didn't know how to express it to Allah. What does that mean? What we learn from here is that human beings need, you know, the sukun. Allah has said, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا This is a, uh, there's two verses. One is, um, one verse is, if you look in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number four, ayah number one. Allah has said, الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسِ وَاحِدًا all of you have been created from one soul, which is Adam alayhi salam. Wa khalaqa minha zawjaha. And from him, Allah created his spouse, his wife, Hawa. Um, in Surah Araf, the, the seventh surah, ayah number 189, Allah says, min nafsin wahida. He is the one that has created you from a single soul. Wa ja'ala minha zawjaha. And Allah has created his wife from him. لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا So that he can settle with her. Now there's a beautiful lesson in this. Adam was unsettled without Hawa. He became settled in Jannah once Hawa was there. He was like, hey, this was the, this was the thing that was missing in my life. 
This was a missing piece to the jigsaw puzzle that was in my life. The one little jigsaw puzzle, whatever was missing in there. This was the, the happiness. I had every other happiness. I had, you know, my, my houses, I had my gardens, I had my rivers, I had all that in Jannah. But the thing that I didn't have was this human being, this woman that was created. And they lived so beautifully in Jannah. What, what we learn from here is when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he said, Ash-shababu shu'batun min al junoon He said, young adults or young men, a shabab is a shabab is from the age of puberty, which is about 12-ish, to, to the age of 25. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one hadith, he called it a branch of madness. He said, shu'batun min al junoon Right? So you young guys here, you are mad. You are insane. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that you've got inside you, you've got this, you know, you've got this unsettled character to yourselves until you get married. Now you can see it. And I can give you a hundred cases, a thousand cases like this. When you have friends, they're young, right? The 24, the guy's 24, every night, you know, he calls you, hey man, you know, Abzi, what's up, man? Let's go out, man. Let's go, let's go and enjoy ourselves and say, yeah, 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 where are we going to go? We're going we're gonna to go clubbing, we're going to go to this pool thing, we're going to go, you know, playing here, we're going to go for footy, we're going to go for this. You know, every other night they're getting together, you know, and they're always looking at, yeah, what's up, let's, let's get out, right? The day he gets married, it's almost someone kidnapped him. And who kidnapped him? His wife kidnapped him, right? You think, man, Abzi, what's wrong with you, man? It's like you divorced me and you married her. What happened, right? We used to like, used to all look out for each other, this and that, and you, you disappeared. Why? Because he's found sukoon. He's found sukoon. The man has found sukoon. This is what Allah talked about. Now he's getting settled. Now he starts to really reflect on life. And for about a few months, up to a year, you don't see him. And then suddenly he pops out again, right? It's like, oh yeah, Abzi's back again. Right? But you never get back together as you were. Like, you know, all those crazy nights you used to have and crazy days you used to have? Well, Abs is not doing any of that. What happened to him? Well, he must have met an alien called a woman. She's changed him. Well, not, it wasn't an alien. It was Sukun. Allah gave him Sukun. He settles down with her. And what happens over time is that he becomes a Rajul. Now, from Shabab, he goes to be, become Rajul. Now, what is Rajul? Rajul means that now he's got legs. Now he's got responsibility. Rajul becomes rigid, which is the legs. He's got responsibility. Now he will really focus on the matters of life. And every man can tell you that after marriage and before marriage, there's a complete different life of how, how you have an outlook on, uh, on life. So to most people who can't find that sukun, we need that. And another thing is that there is no sukun. From this, it's very clear that, you know, people who want to find sukun and real settlement, Outside of this, with all the material life, they will not find it. They will, they will not find it. And Allah has said that. And there's one thing Allah said about tamanina. If you want to find the settlement of the ruh, of the soul, then it's with dhikrullah. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. Only through constant remembrance of God, the ruh, the qalb, the spiritual side will be settled. But the physical side will be settled through getting married to a woman. The physical side, Allah said, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا He has said, all of you will get settled once you get married and both of them, you know, find that there's, 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 there's a beautiful life that, that starts together. So that's, that's another le lesson that we learned. Now, the next thing that we come to is that, from my opinion, you would have gathered that um, Allah Azza wa Jal has, um, you know, from my opinion, you would have gathered that Allah Azza wa Jal has now created Adam in that Jannah, which is the real Jannah, not the Jannah on this earth. You know, I've told you about the difference of opinion according to the Mufassirin. Now what happens is, that, happens is that Allah tells Adam alayhi salam rules of Jannah. He says to him, Inna laka fiha alla tajua. Allah Azza wa Jalla says to him that in this, in this Jannah that I've created, you will not become hungry ever. La tajua. This is in this is Surah Taha, Surah number 20, Ayah number 118 and 119. Allah said the principles are you will never become hungry. Number two. La ta'ra, you will never become naked. Both of them are clothed. Wa annaka la tazma, you will never become thirsty. Wa fiha wa la tadha, and you will never have this place ever get too hot for you. So the 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 you know the whatever whatever is is 
you know, the heat or the, however Allah has created the light and the heat, whatever, in that Jannah. Allah says, Wala tadha, you will never have that, that the hotness of the sun rising above you that it makes you too hot. Okay, so these are some of the rules Allah said. Allah said to him, and her, kula fiha. Allah said, just eat, eat whatever you want. Ragadan haythu shi'tuma. Now, the, the qualities of this is that there are no restrictions whatsoever and there are no limits to what you want to eat. You can eat how much you want and haythu shi'tuma, you can go wherever you want. So the whole of this paradise is for you, but I've put you one test. That one test is, except for this tree here, this particular tree here, you must not eat from this one particular tree. Now, what was that tree? There's many different things in the tafasir, but nothing is certain. The Quran hasn't gone into that certainty. So there's really no point in saying what that tree was. Now, if you go to the Bible, you'll find that it was the apple tree. But again, we don't, we don't believe in that. Uh, as in, we have no, nothing in our sources telling us what was of that tree. Um, but there are many things that are mentioned inside the tafasir of what was that, you know, whether it was the wheat, um, the, the wheat that Allah prohibited from or other things, but you don't need to go into any of that. It was simply a tree Allah told him not to eat from. Allah also told him that he would stay in a good condition inside Jannah and he can roam with his wife wherever he wants, except that if he is from this tree, he's going to become the one that um, wrongs himself. He's going to wrong himself and she's going to wrong herself. Now what happens here is that um, Adam alayhi salam, he's with Hawa and they're in Jannah and they're roaming everywhere else and they're staying away from this tree. Number one thing was Shaitan needed to make Adam alayhi salam come near the tree. But number two was Shaitan needed a temptation. Number three was Shaitan needed a logical argument. Number four was shaitan needed to make him believe in that logical argument, right? So please remember these because this is the way that he makes us go wrong as well, right? Now remember, fawaswasa lahuma shaitan. The whole was the first waswasa, the first whispering that shaitan gave. Allah clearly explains stage by stage what it was. And there's lesson in every single part of it. So number one was Allah said, Wala taqraba hadisha. Allah said, don't even come near this tree. This was Allah's hukum. Don't even near, come near this tree. Allah didn't say, don't just eat. Allah didn't say, la taqula min hadhi shajara. Don't eat from this tree. He said, wala taqraba min hadhi shajara. Don't even come near this tree. The same thing Allah said to us about wine in the Quran. Intoxicants of the Quran. The same thing Allah said about gambling in the Quran and so on. Allah said, Ijtanibu. Allah used the word when Ya Yuladina Amanu, Innam al Khamru, Wal Maisur, Wal Ansa, Wal Azama, Rissumin Amani Shaitan, Fajitanibu. Allah said, Keep your sides away from it. Stay away from it. Stay away from alcohol. Stay away from intoxicants. Stay away from gambling. Stay away from all these things. Why? If you come near them, temptation can come. If you're not even near them, temptation can't come. You can't be tempted with something you can't see. You're not near around, right? If you're near a woman, then you can get tempted. For a man, you can get, that's why Allah says, Wala taqrabu zina. He never said, Wala taznu. No one in the Quran, Allah said, Wala taznu. Don't fornicate, don't have adultery. He never said that. He said, Wala taqrabu zina. Don't even go near anything that is ad, uh, you know, of adultery or fornication. So if you stay away from all this lewd stuff, you can't get tempted. Now, the first thing was, Shaitan made Adam alayhi salam and Hawa somehow come near that tree. But it's alright. They weren't going to eat from the tree. But they came near it. Rule number one broken. Next thing. Shaitan started to whisper. Now he was whispering. So it was the same way that we would get whispering. You know the biblical story has a snake coming there and it's like, has thou, yo, Adam, would you want to eat from this tree? Whatever. You know, we don't believe no snake, no nothing, all right? So don't go into all these fairy tales about, about that. We simply know Allah said that there was waswasa, that he whispering. So he would have whispered, said, said what? He said, now in certain tafsir, he said that a creature or something came to him and spoke to him and, and convinced him about that. But the other one is that it, it was a whispering. So it was, it, what was it? It was, eat from, if I eat from this tree, what will happen is that you know, he said, you will live. He said, you will live forever. 
you will become immortal. And you will فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ he, One of the things he said that you will become from, from those إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ malakain. He said, you can become an angel. To Adam said, he went to Hawa said, you can become like the angels. You don't have to be mortal. You don't have to die anymore. أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ You could live forever if, if you just eat from this. Now that didn't convince Adam alayhi salam. That didn't convince. Uh, this was a logical argument he presented. But he needed them to be convinced of the logical argument. Now this is where shaitan lied. So what did shaitan do? Shaitan said, وَقَاسَ مَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاسِ And you want to find all of this is in Surah Araf, Ayah number 19 to 21. Shaitan said, Wallahi, by Allah I swear, I'm telling you the truth. Now when Adam salam heard that, whether it was a creature from outside, whether it was a whispering, in the, when he heard that shaitan took the name of Allah, Adam salam was a prophet in the end of the day. He never heard anyone lying. He's never heard anyone, forget lying. He's, Allah's name was taken. This thing must be absolutely true. وَقَاسَبَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَ لَا مِنَ النَّاسُ He said, Wallahi, I'm, I'm being really, I'm telling you the best thing of your interest for you. I'm telling you this. Adam alayhi salam made the mistake of eating from the tree based on this qasam, based on this oath. It was a mistake. It wasn't that he was, he, anything, nothing else convinced him. This was the thing that led him. Now from this, what we say that the isma of the anbiya, the fact that Prophets do not sin is very clear in this. And Allah said in the Holy Quran that Falan Najid Lahu Azma. This is in Surah Taha. I did not find a determined will inside Adam to disobey me. I did not find that. Though his action was of disobedience, wa asa Adam Rabba, though his action was of disobedience, Falam Najid Lahu Azma. There was no determination that I found God is saying inside Adam to disobey me. He was deluded because Shaitan has said, Wallahi.